Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate and today we are going to be doing a bookshelf tour. Someone once said, I can't remember where I heard this, but someone once said that if you have over a thousand books, it's considered a library and there are definitely a thousand books here. So let me stop rambling. Let's go through them and hopefully I can do this where I can like show you the books and we can look at them together. So as you guys can see here, this is on the sort of, I don't know whether you would call this the front or the back wall, but we have our TV in the center there and either side we have flagged bookshelves and the way I've kind of designed this which I kind of I spoke about in my last video where I took you through how we built these bookshelves but essentially I have on this side all of my hardbacks I am not the biggest hardback fan I have to say when it comes to contemporary novels I would much prefer to have the paperback version. So all of my contemporary novels in the paperback are on this shelf here and all of my hardback novels are on that shelf there. And as you can see, there are a lot more paperbacks than there are hardbacks. Anyway, the way that I've, I haven't really organized my hardback covers by any particular manner. Let me just see if I can zoom in here. They're just kind of organized, I suppose. At the top there, I have, I've got some of my, I suppose, larger hardbacks up there but there's no there's no real rhyme or reason to my organization apart from keeping authors together let's start with the shelf up here so as you can see I've got birdsong over there that was actually a gift from my uncle it's probably one of my most prized possessions and then I've got a fair few sort of hardbacks going across there obviously the Emily Wilson translation of the Iliad which I'm currently reading the Emily Wilson translation of the Odyssey but this book is so so precious to me let me just show you for a second so we're at quite an angle here I'm hoping that this is actually going to work hi Finn hi Millie um so I wanted to show you this book. Um, this is the Iliad, the Emily Wilson translation. Emily Wilson is one of the first woman translators to translate the Iliad and the Odyssey. But I don't know if you guys can see that. This was a gift from my friends Beck and Anne when I matriculated at Oxford and they wrote the most gorgeous note. That's a note. That isn't the book. That is a insert note from my friends when I matriculated from Oxford and I just think that is the sweetest thing it continues on it's like three pages long and because of that it is one of my most prized possessions that I own let's continue on so I've got two of Philip Pullman's books are uh, the book of dust and then I was collecting um, Miss Pennegrin's home for peculiar peculiar children over here I haven't actually read these but I do have them and I am keen on reading them at some point then a couple of my hardbacks here the luminaries was one of my massive reads for this year and I listened to the audiobook and I absolutely loved it it did not take me six months as I thought it was going to take me to read that book it took me far shorter because it was so, so good and I absolutely loved it. So I would highly recommend. It's one of my 24 for 2024. So big, big recommend. Anyway, these are a couple of my other books that I have read. I'll just do a couple of call outs. Atonement, if you haven't read it, highly recommend. Piranesi, I absolutely loved. In Memoriam, I'm desperate to read. I got it was it last year or this year I can't remember I think it was last year 
while I was in Oxford. Yes, that's correct. It was last year while I was in Oxford. Desperate, desperate to read that. Jackie Kay's Trumpet was just one of the most eye-opening books I think I've ever read. And I, I'm, I just love that book. A couple of these books were actually gifted to me uh, as a part of booktube and book talk I know these three absolutely were so oh these four sorry I lie these four absolutely were so just just love that about the book talk community but the one collection that I do have here is this is my independent Irish numbered collections and these Old Man C, Schindler's List, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Lord of the Flies, etc, etc, etc. You may see one or two numbers missing here. It's not because they're actually missing from the collection. It's because I have them upstairs in my office because they're a part of my 24 for 2024. For those wondering what the rest of the shelves have on them, I've got a box up there that has all of the cards that we've ever gotten quite a few in there uh, obviously the Xbox controllers for uh, for Hogwarts Legacy escapades got a couple of travel books over here that I've inherited from my mum and I kind of like them as like coffee table books but obviously they don't get read that often so I just like to keep them there we've got our wedding album over there a small collection of DVDs, which we will not let go of, just showing our age over there, and then our board games that we have over here. My small collection of records, even though we don't have a record player yet. And then over there are some photo albums, but usually what happens with this book case, because of where it's situated, it kind of sits behind the door. So you don't usually get to see this part of the shelf that much. So it's more for just little odds and ends and then obviously we have our TV over here and let's move on to the contemporary literature shelf. Change up the angle here for a second be because before I start looking at the shelf I have such ambitions for the shelf that I have not yet fulfilled. So in the video that I made I said that I wanted to organize the shelf by the year that I read the book. And I kind of started doing that, but I also didn't want to separate out books by the same author. So it kind of works, it kind of hasn't worked exactly. I would love to hear your guys' suggestions of how to arrange the shelf. I've done color, the other shelves, which we'll talk about in a bit, I organize by publishing house, house, publishing house, and I love that. I don't really want to change that. And so I have organized these books by color before. I've organized them by author's surname, alphabetically. I've done a lot of things and I'm not sure what to do next. I do like the idea of organizing them by the year that I've read the book. I maybe just need to spend a bit of time with the shelf and figure out exactly what I want to do with it. All right, so as I mentioned, I started organizing these books by the year that I read them. But before I get into that, I mean, this tray here was made by my mother-in-law. So was that tray over there. And isn't that just amazing? They're so beautiful. So this is my husband's home back in South Africa. And that's when we were in New Zealand. It's a scene of New Zealand. I'll go back to it in a bit. But then we also had this friend of ours draw or paint this little portrait of Millie when we first got her. There she is, just chilling in the sun. Hi, baby girl. And it's one of our most prized possessions. We just love it so much. So I, I just think it's so pretty. It's so cute up there. So getting back to the shelves as I was saying a lot of the books that I have up there I oh can't even see my hand there we go a lot of the books that I have up here are books that I have had from when I was younger 
or books that I've inherited. I think that Cold Mountain edition up there I've had was actually my dad's and I stole it. But a lot of these books I read when I was in high school. Maybe not Where the Crawdads Sing. I think that came out quite a bit later. But all of the other ones I definitely read when I was in high school, when I was still living in South Africa, because I remember reading each of them while I was there. And then Tuesdays with Murray is the same. I think I also read that when I was in South Africa, but a, and a fair few of these. But as we start to kind of get into my, I read these while I, once I had left South Africa, once I had started traveling, didn't do that much reading in New Zealand. Unfortunately, I kind of had a really long reading drought, but I did read a fair bit still, but I mainly read on my Kindle and I didn't have physical books and I haven't gotten physical books of some of the books that I wrote some of the books that I read while I was in New Zealand just because I either didn't feel like I wanted to read them again or just I already had them on my Kindle so I haven't really done that but as you can see here we start to get into I read The Bell Jar while I was in New Zealand but then I've got the journals of Sylvia Plath and Ariel by Sylvia Plath and I haven't read the journals and I haven't read Ariel yet but I don't want to separate out those books from Sylvia Plath. So this is where we're starting to get into the issue that I spoke about. Same thing with like Sally Rooney, for instance. I don't have my normal people copy. I lent that to a friend, but my conversations with friends and Beautiful World, Where Are You? I am, I have, I'm currently listening to Beautiful World, Where Are You? And by the way, I'm absolutely loving it. I know controversy here. Some people love Sally Rooney. Some people hate Sally Rooney. I'm just going to come out and say that I am on the I love Sally Rooney fan and or I'm the I love Sally Rooney side of the argument. And if you hate her, I get it. I understand. But we're just going to ignore that. We're going to ignore the fact that there are people with different opinions. People love Barbara Kinslover. The Poisonwood Bible, I absolutely despise that book. So, you know, each to their own. Anyway, I got so distracted here, but a cut, a most of these books I actually ended up reading while I was overseas, but from about Americana, uh, you see, I read Americana two years ago when I was in Oxford and all these books here from Americana, Americana, The Wandering Earth, The Icarus Girl, The Brief Life of One, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wu, White Teeth, all of those books, this collection of books here, were part of my Oxford graduate summer program in world literature. So I wanted to keep them together because that's a very, very prominent place in my head. So I wanted to keep those together. But then obviously I wanted to keep my purple hibiscus, half of a yellow sun together. And then the other Zadie Smith book that I have, which is on beauty. And because I thought that my Zadie Smith was now my tall paperback, I could start bringing in some of my other tall paperbacks. My Tanner French, I have read the Witch Elm, this is actually signed. And then I've got my Gregory Davis, David Roberts, Shantaram and the Mountain Shadow. Read Shantaram, absolutely love Shantaram. Read it when I was in high school, I believe, loved it. Mountain Shadow, I haven't read. Uh, the Book Thief, Marcus Suskas, I read that when I was in university. Absolutely loved it, one of my favorite books. But then, we start to get into the books that I read in the last two or so years and some which I am still currently reading. I think this shelf is probably one of my favorite shelves on my bookshelf. I'm gonna say that a lot, I reckon. But Babel, I read last year as a part of my 2023 TBR, loved it. Till I read the year before, 
Angela Carter, I think I read the year before, Diary of a Young Girl, and Frank, I actually think that needs to, see this is the thing, I really need to actually pull all of these books out and relook at them because Anne Frank, I definitely read in university or high school, so I need to move that around. Talking about Milkman, I read a couple of years ago, one of the weirdest, but also possibly best novels I've ever read, Anna Burns, she's an Irish author and she writes about the struggles in Northern Ireland. It's really compelling, I would highly, highly re recommend. At Night All Blood Is Black by David Depop. This is a brilliant little book. If you haven't read this, I would highly, highly recommend reading this. It really just engaged me completely. Written on the Body, I've read The Prophet, I haven't read, but I did read The Broken Wings um, by Kelly Gibran last year as a part of my 2023 TBR, and I wanted to keep those together. So, and then we kind of start getting into the 2023 TBR list in here, which you guys would have seen. I will leave my 2023 TBR video linked, but I just quickly did not finish this. Liked, liked, loved, liked, liked, liked. Didn't really like. I'm surprised. Everyone thinks this book is really great. I think it is really great. I just didn't really like it that much. Haven't read The Interpretive Maladies. I've just bought it. I read Jhumpa Lahiri's Whereabouts last year and it is absolutely fantastic. One of the best reads I've ever read, ever. So I wanted to keep those together. Maybe I'll read this this year. I think I've actually put it on my 2024 TBR. I can't remember. But yes, love, 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 love. Really enjoyed, didn't think I was going to recommend it from my friend Katie. Read not last year, I read this last, it, these three books I'm hoping to finish, this trilogy I'm hoping to finish this year. Read this two years ago, absolutely loved it. Book of Not read last year, thought it was good, okay, made me feel very uncomfortable, I think that was the purpose of it. This Mournable Body is the one that I will be reading this year. I'll also be reading it as Buddy Read in my book club. Celestial Bodies read last year, thought it was absolutely incredible. And then we've got the greatest historical fiction writer you will ever experience. And I will fight anyone who says otherwise. But this is Hilary Mantel. And I have read all of the Wolf Hall trilogy. It was what got me into Hilary Mantel. I just, I love these books so much. I consume them so quickly. I will reread them. I just think they are brilliant. And mm, love them. I'm desperate to read A Place of Greater Safety. It is chonky though. It is quite a thick book and I will probably need to spend a bit of time with it, so I don't know if I will get to that this year, but maybe next year. And then I've also got A Change of Climate, which I really want to read. So, that's kind of where we at. I also have some books here, because we kind of start getting into the, the books I haven't yet read, but also I've got some among here that I have read. And then I've got some among there that I've read. And then these are kind of, half of them are books that I've read. Oh, no, actually probably more, majority of these books are books that I haven't yet read, but I want to read. And some of them I have read. So this is what I mean. I need to kind of figure out how to do the shelf. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let them please leave comments in the, sec in the comments down below. So, for example, here we've got my Kazu Ishiguru section. I've read Never Let Me Go. Never Let Me Go. It's one of my favorite reads of all time. I haven't read the other two, but I really want to. I've read Dune, which I really loved and would highly, highly recommend. Please read it before you go and see the film, guys. It's so, so much better to go into the film having read this book because the book gives you so much more. 
but I also understand that maybe sci-fi reading isn't everyone's thing, but it's so good. It's just so, so good. I also read this this year, The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, and I cried big baby tears for this book. Not because it's necessarily sad, but just because it's that touching. And by far will be one of the best reads that I have read this year. I started Discovery of Witches last year, the series. I finished this book in like a couple of days. It was absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to dive into Shadow of Night because it's set in early modern England and my brain cannot deal with that. I know that I'm just going to devour this book in like a couple of days. I know it's going to happen and then I'm going to move on to the other ones but you know when you know that a book's going to be good you kind of want to you're waiting for the right moment to read it this is this is that for me because i as you as you guys might see i don't have a lot of the book talk books or things like that but this these are my guilty pleasures and mm, i absolutely cannot wait a couple of these i am still down to read a couple of them on my 2024 TBR list like Flora Thompson's La Christ Candleford. I finished after Sappho. It's on my 2024 TBR list. I really enjoyed that. A couple of these. I read book uh, Brooklyn. I don't know why it's here. Maybe I just kind of got over organizing all of these but there are a few here that I still desperately desperately want to read but some of them I have read like so I've read The Circle I don't know why I put it there but there's a few here that I want to read but this shelf see I really need to organize this because this shelf is now just getting hello baby girl hi that's the dog's toy basket if you guys could not tell See, I need to organize the shelf because we started off over here with poetry and then we went into some non-fiction short story thing. Philip Pullman, I've obviously read. I st <laughs> I'm so bleak that I don't have Northern Lights in this edition. I'm desperate to get hold of it, but I buy most of my books secondhand, so... I need to find a secondhand version of that. Let me just adjust my seating here. These are new acquisitions that I got from my secondhand bookstore, so they shouldn't really be in here. Maybe I need to create some shelves that are like recent acquisitions. Then also the berry pickers, Amanda Peters. I'm desperate to read this. A colleague at work recommended it to me and I can't wait to read it. The Bee Sting, I finished this year. I thought it was great. But then we start getting into like my tiny, 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 tiny selection of non-fiction books. But this shelf, if I tell you that when I even started like my booktube, which was just over a year ago, this shelf probably consisted of like that many books. And some of these are my husband's as well, so I just wanted to preface that. Actually, only two of them, the last two, are my husband's. Everything else is mine. But anyway, this non-fiction section has grown so much and there's so many more upstairs. I am on a non-fiction stream at the moment, you guys. I can't even explain why. I'm just loving reading some non-fiction books. I've read The Silk Roads. I have to say out of those I've read the Silk Roads I read Jonathan Dolly Moore's semi-autobiography Desire Memoir absolutely fantastic I've spoken about this book several times hold on let's get it back in there I read that last year highly recommend The Black Atlantic by Paul Gilroy absolutely fantastic formed the basis of my master's proposal 
couple of these others I have read. I've read Rethinking History. The Hyacinth Girl was on my TBR list for this year. I finished it in January. It's absolutely incredible. Lyndall Gordon is so brilliant. These are about the letters between T.S. Eliot and Emily Hale. Exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. But as you can see, there's a couple of like random odd bits here. And I really want to just sort out the shelf more. Oh, we forgot about this shelf. I kind of started putting these together because they're some of my more special, I suppose, contemporary books. But again, it just kind of evolved into a mismatch of things. So Vera Britton's Testament of Youth, I read two, three, three, four years ago, probably. I got The Testament of Friendship from my secondhand bookstore. I haven't read that yet. Obviously, you can see I've read The Lord of the Rings. This cover, or this book, I have such a love-hate with, relationship with, because obviously I love The Lord of the Rings, but I got this book when I was really young, when I was still in school. I must have been like, I don't know, 10 or 11. I can't remember, but I got this book. It was when the films came out. So it's the film adaptation cover of the book. And I hate film adaptation covers of books. I really don't like them. But this is the book that I got. And as you can see, I've read it to death. And I just, it's got sentimental value and I can't part with it. But it's horrendous. I also have my small collection of Claire Keegan books. I have read small things like these. I'm currently reading Foster. I've got So Late in the Day. I don't have Antarctica, but I know she's coming out with some new ones. And then you see these books here. Jennifer Croft's Homesick and The Crooked Plow. The Crooked Plow I actually wanted to pull out of here because this has been nominated or long listed for the, in, the International Booker the long list and we both know, we all know that I am an international booker girly. So I'm going to put that there. If you guys didn't know, that's my reading chair. Usually my reading books go here. There's a few over there because I had to prop up the camera, but nevertheless, we've got a couple here that have just kind of thrown themselves in here. We the Living by um, Ayn Rand is one of my favorite books of all time. If you hate Rand, I completely understand. You are totally entitled to that opinion. Brideshead Revisited. I've read all of these, by the way. And this book, Dark Hearts, is a compilation of short stories, but it's got a, one of the short stories in here is by my friend, Simone LaRue. There she is. Hey, Sim. So obviously I had to get the book and I've quite honestly only read her story in there because it's all horror -y kind of books and I don't, I'm not good at that. So yes, that is that shelf over there. As I said, it needs some organization. I would love your guys' help with organizing it. If you can let me know what you think about it in the comments down below, I will be forever grateful. All right, guys, we have come to the shelf behind the couch now. We've got one shelf here, one shelf over there that we'll talk about now. But these shelves at the back, I've popped them behind the couch and the collections that I've put behind the couch here are because they are aesthetically so, so beautiful, but also because they are my collections. These are the books that I have collected and I will continue to collect throughout my years. As you might know, I'm not just an avid reader, but I am a book collector. And as a part of that, I have collections of books that I keep my eye out that I am trying to collect. Some of these collections are complete and that is great and I'll talk you through those but the way that these books are organized behind me are by publishing house, by collection, and 
for me, that just brings me so much joy. This is something that I am willing to spend my hard-earned money on is for these collections of books. So, yeah, let me give you a little bit of a tour. I don't think I'll be able to, like, point and talk. I don't think you'll really be able to see that. I don't think I can zoom. No, I can't zoom. That's okay. So I will have to voice over as I talk through these collections. Oh, maybe I can do this. Maybe we can zoom in manually later. But, oh yeah, you can see that. Okay, we'll have to do this in a little bit of a bizarre way. But, let's see, you can kind of dip down, right? So, over here, this collection over here is my little penguin puffin group collection. It's a lot of the sort of children's books that you would have these days. Peter Pan, Black Beauty, Call of the Wild. I've read some of these. I haven't read all of them and I really want to read a lot of them. But I've also got, you won't be able to see this, but I've got them next to my childhood teddy that I have kept. But I also have on the shelf here, these are my childhood books. Now, it may come as a surprise to you, but I actually didn't read that much as a child. I wasn't interested in reading as a child because I... I struggled with reading. My eyes went too quickly over the page and I used to skip things and my teachers thought that I had a reading disability. But after a while, I got into read. This is such a bizarre story. I don't know if you guys actually want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you the story anyway. When I, how old was I? It was 10, nine or 10. I can't remember exactly. I think I was 10. Yes, I was 10 or 11. And I started reading the Harry Potter books. And I got so into them. At that point, there were only the first four books were out. And I was absolutely obsessed with these books. I read them. I loved them. I got so into them. Me and my friends would read them together at like break times in between school. And it formed the basis of me loving reading. That was Harry Potter for me. After I finished the four books, the first four books of Harry Potter, I went and then read that Lord of the Rings book and I got into fantasy reading and I have been reading ever since. Obviously the genres have changed and all that kind of stuff, but that was those were the foundations of my love of reading and for that I will be forever grateful. But having said that, however, my childhood still had some reading aspects to it. I just didn't read that much. But these are the books that I have kept from my childhood and I will keep because they're incredibly sentimental, particularly this copy here of Peter Pan which my uncle, or my cousin, my cousin actually, gave me this when I was really young. And I didn't appreciate it then when she gave it to me because I couldn't quite understand. She wrote a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, she wrote a little note in there. But the illustrations in this book of Peter Pan, they're all varied illustrations, but it is the most beautiful copy of a book that I think I might own. I just love it so, so much. It is so stunning. I mean, look at this cover. Isn't this incredible? And Peter Pan was one of my favorite Disney films when I was growing up. So I've got Peter Pan, Winnie the Pooh, The Jungle Book, Aesop's Fables, and Black Beauty. But what I also have in the back here, which I'll show you guys, is for the love of Elliot. If you guys don't know, our dogs, Millie and Leon, are Swedish Balkans. And we got Millie from a breeder in New Zealand called Petter. Um, 
Peter Dahl, and she's the author of this book. So when we got Millie, she gave this book to us. It is a story about a Swedish ball hunt and an autistic boy and how the dog and him were best friends. But I mean, look at the illustrations in this book. It's just, it's so incredible. Anyway, so this book is very, very sacred to us as a family and it's also signed. Peter signed it when we, uh, when we got Millie or when we went to go and choose Millie, yeah. Christmas 2018, can you believe it? That's, that's just amazing. Oh, wow, trip down memory lane, I'm feeling quite sentimental. Anyway, okay, let's stop this nonsense and get into the fun parts of the books. I think I'm gonna have to actually move you guys. All right, so as you guys can see, this is the shelf behind the couch. As I mentioned, those are my puffin collections for the love of Elliot and my childhood books. I will talk about these books. Let's start from the top and then work our way down. So at the top here, as you can possibly see it now I have to admit I can't reach this top shelf and it probably is in want of some organization but I have up there my collections of uh, books from Wordsworth Publishing on the first side over here and you can see they kind of all match in some ways but these are the kind of outliers in terms of the colors but the black spines all match. And then I have got my penguin black spines. I don't think they make these anymore. The penguin black spines, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do still make them, but I don't see them as often. Happy to be corrected there, but I do have the penguin black spines over there. And then it just becomes a penguin focused shelf. So we've got a little bit of the Wordsworth, but then it's mainly penguin because we've got the penguin black spines, we've got a few outlying penguins over there, the uh, also secondhand books over there, and then we've got a collection over there called the penguin, I think it's called the penguin loves or the penguin mini loves, but this collection of books is just basically short, short novels all about love and one of the books that's in there, that's one of my favorites, it's over there. Oh, the zoom function works quite well. James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, one of my favorite books of all time. And then the penguin, the penguin obsession continues. We go into some of my special edition penguin orange spines. These are all second hand purchases. As you might see, they're looking a bit worse for wear. Lady Shatley's Lover, Sons and Lovers, and we've got two, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Return of Sherlock Holmes and A Study in Scarlet. We've also got those two collections of books, also secondhand, um, by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, uh, Love in the Time of Cholera and 100 Years of Solitude. Admittedly, I haven't read these books and I really, really want to. So that will need to, that will need to happen soon. But one of the complete collections that I had, I said I'd talk about them. And these are my Penguin Contemporary Orange Spine collections. I don't know if these are printed anymore. That would, I would be very interested to see. But this is a complete collection, I believe, of the Penguin orange spine books these are all and I'm happy to be corrected but I think I'm right these are all by American authors again I'm happy to be corrected I think one's missing here but I think it might be upstairs which I can go and show you guys and then I've got the small section of orange spines that are non-fictions I believe Yep, they're non-fictions. And then I've got my Penguin English Library spines over there. I absolutely love this, the style of Penguin books, these English Library books. 
mainly because they're kind of like those floppy paperbacks. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but I absolutely love that about that about that selection and I'd love to get a lot more of those. So then we're gonna move down to the next penguin selection. We're a bit zoomed in, let's zoom out here for a second. So before the blue spines, there was the white spines. <laughs> I don't know, again, if they make these white spine books, but as you can see, my Anne Rand books, Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead, which are some of my more prized possessions. I've had those since I was young. I think I must have been in university when I got them. You can see they're no longer white. The spines are no longer white, but they are, they are part of my, my collection over there. And then I've got my penguin blue spines over there that I have been collecting. And those random two penguin books in like different colors. I don't know what the collection is. I'd love to know because I think they look very, very pretty. I've got a very small selection of Oxford books over here, but I do like that they kind of sit together. They are more academic than anything else. I think most of those books I have bought for university apart from uh, Peg Sawyer's An Old Woman Reflection or An Old Woman's Reflections. Those are uh, oral traditions of Irish literature, but I think most of these, besides those two, I have had for university. Moving down to my Fitzcarraldo Blue and White collection. This seems to be growing quite consistently. I am absolutely obsessed with Fitzcarraldo. I am planning to read the books of Jacob later on this year. So that's going to be fun. And I've read a few of these. I've read um, All Good Sasak's other book, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. I've read Annie and Rose Getting Lost. I read Paradeus this year as well really interesting book but there's a few of these that are on my 2024 tbr so i will definitely be ticking more of these books off as we kind of go along i have a small collection of these macmillan are they the macmillan ones no i'm sorry the bloomsbury modern classics collection so i've got jonathan strange and mr norrell the song of achilles and the kite runner all three of which i've read and which i love I would obviously like to get the entire collection. We'll get there eventually. And apologies for the mishappen state of my Tilted Access collection here, but I recently took a book out of this that is upstairs, so hence the collection is pushed over. But I absolutely love Tilted Access. Small press. Uh, I've spoken about Tomb of Sand a fair amount of times. It is one of my favorite books of all time, and I read it last year or the year before I think it was the year before absolutely insane book it is so so brilliant and it opened my eyes to all of Tilted Axis's books and as you can see they are numbered so they are a collection to get because they're numbered speaking of numbered collections I've also got my small Irish press books over here this is Tram Press's collection as you can see, I don't have all of them, and some of them I have on my shelves upstairs as well. So I will try and fill out that collection, but I do have two copies of Fane, which are, which is a book that I was gifted last year by Tramp Press, and then I went to the opening launch and I got both of those signed, and they are so, so special to me. Okay guys, bear with me, we are almost there. I wish these books would stay up, they just won't. But these are my small Penguin Collection books that I have, the mini blue spines, also those mini black spines that you can see over there. The sci-fi collection, I only have two, and I only have three of the George Orwell collection, but we will get there. I'm not 100% happy about how these books look here, but there is no doubt that these bookshelves will change throughout the years, and we just have to adjust to that when that does happen.
All right, guys, we're on to the final shelf. We would get there. I knew we would get there, but this is my special editions shelf. These are my special collections. These are the ones that are very dear to me, that are priceless in some way, shape, and form. So let's go through them. Let me take you through them, and then we're done. And you never have to hear me talk about books ever again. That is a complete lie. You will hear me talk about books all the time. So starting at the top over there, I have this very interesting collection of some of Charles Dickens' The Illustrated Library limited edition book. This is more like a doorstop than anything else and it's only the first volume. So I'm interested to see if there are other volumes. I, when I saw this book in my secondhand bookstore, I did not expect it to be that big. So she just chills there. She just, she lives her best life. But over here are, I suppose, some of my leather and cloth bound edition books. As you can see, I've got a collection of Jane Austen's there that I have had for a couple of years. Very, very sentimental. I do have another Iliad and Odyssey, different translator, I just like the spine. These I inherited from a family friend, so they are quite, not necessarily old, but they definitely predate me. Um, I have a few of the Clothbound Penguin Classic books here, David Copperfield, Oliver Twist, A Christmas Carol and other Christmas writings from Charles Dickens. I would love to get all of the Dickens novels in these. And then again, a gift from my friends when I matriculated at Oxford, I have Jew the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. I'm reading this book at the moment and I am so thrilled that I have this in the Penguin Classics now because it is becoming one of my best reads of all time. I am loving Jude at the moment. I've got a couple of the Virago Modern Classics books here, two, three Daphne du Maurier's and a Molly Keane. I would love to obviously expand these collections. I've got four in the hardback, two in the paperback, but I would love to expand their collection. I've got one copy of The Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien. Love to finish out that that collection as well. It's better than my paperback collection. Don Quixote, haven't read, would love to read. I got this copy of Wuthering Heights from a secondhand store when I was in university and I just can't get rid of it. It's super duper cute. Um, and then a couple of other sort of smaller books, but by far one of my prized possessions is this penguin drop caps collection and it bugs me so so much that all 26 books do not fit on the shelf. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much it bugs me and I cannot tell you how much I have tried to shove them together so that they fit on the shelves they just won't I've tried but as you can see these books are alphabetized by the author's surnames and they include works from the author's surnames that were very very prominent and very prevalent and it's just it's so beautiful it's such an amazing collection of books I'm so so happy that I managed to collect all of these most of them were a gift for my birthday a couple of years ago and I'm very, very grateful for that. And then you can clearly see my Harry Potter collection, which is incredibly sun damaged, but I won't get rid of them, obviously, because most of these are actually first editions. Uh, bar, I think, my Chamber of Secrets, which I lost my original one, because you can see this one's newer. I lost my original one, so I had to replace it, so I replaced it at a secondhand bookstore. But that is my collection. I also have the original 
small books of fantastic beasts and quidditch through the ages and um the original tales of the beetle and the bard still need to collect the textbooks that were produced uh hogwarts a history for example i would love to get hold of those but I don't think they actually made, I think they're fan made, which I also don't mind. Maybe I can start adding some fan fiction, Harry Potter fan fiction to the shelf, maybe some Dramoni fan fiction, manacled, mm, that would be ideal. I've also started to collect the illustrated ones by Jim Kay. I've only got obviously the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets because these are quite pricey, but I hope to build out that collection. Soon. My other, I suppose, more academic collection here is my Shakespeare collection. So most of them bought full university, but nevertheless, we've got our Art and Shakespeare collections. This has more than just Shakespeare in here. Um, the Spanish tragedy, for in instance, the Duchess of Malfi. Um, a couple of these I am actually referencing in my masters, so that's why they're also here. And I've also got some poetry collections over here. I got two of the Shakespeare plays in the little spines here. The reason I like those little mini books is that I buy them whenever I go and see a Shakespeare play live. And now I've watched a fair few Shakespeare, Shakespeare plays online. I don't count that. It's when I go and see one live that I really like. So I've got Midsummer Night's Dream there and King Richard the King Richard the Third, which I bought when I went to go and see those plays, and I really like that tradition. I'd obviously like to build that out. And then one of my most prized possessions is this facsimile copy of James Joyce's Ulysses. I'm not gonna go on about how much I love Ulysses. You guys are sick of me telling you how much I love Ulysses, but I love Ulysses, so one more time. I then got these vintage classic editions of Virginia Woolf over there. Also, All Quiet on the Western Front, just randomly chilling in there because they fit the same size. But I think that collection is complete unless they come out with more copies of books there, but I really like these books. I think they're very, very cool. I've got the same collection. I've got the same collection here for the Russian classics. The only one I'm missing, which I still need to purchase, is Tolstoy's Worn Peace, which I have read and I absolutely love. I've read Crime and Punishment, but I haven't read any of the others, and I really need to. And then we've got my vintage classic red spine. You guys would have seen these in the shops, but I just like to keep all of these together. The ones that I am collecting is I've got most of the F. Scott Fitzgerald books in these and the John Williams ones as well. I've got Augustus here. Where's Stoner? I think I've loaned it to a friend. But yes, so that's that. A couple of the other books I, I have here, which probably aren't that interesting. Some textbooks that I have gotten as a part of my studies. Uh, a few more coffee books over there. Coffee table books, not coffee, not books of coffee, but coffee table books. And then down there, I have a few recipe books. All right, everyone, the sun has moved and so we move with it. But those are my bookshelves. That is everything that I have on my bookshelves, apart from the books that I have upstairs, which are either books that I'm working with currently for my masters, books that I'm currently reading, books that are on my TBR that I want to keep close in case I want to pick them out. A couple of things like that. I don't have on the shelves yet, but they will be on the shelves eventually. So maybe the idea is that these books get reviewed on a yearly basis. Let me know what you guys think and thank you for sticking around with me for what I'm assuming is going to be a very long video. And 
I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks, bye.